this short video, I'll give a brief overview of the war in Serbia from the 29th of July 1914 until the end of the war. I'll then outline the campaign in Salonika, which is now known as Thessaloniki. The Balkans had for centuries been an important overland trade route which linked Europe to Asia. Its access to the Adriatic and Aegean seas also made a vitally important supply route throughout the war. The Balkans consisted of Slovenia, Croatia, Dalmatia and Bo Bosnia-Herzegovina, which were part of Austria-Hungary. The independent kingdoms of Montenegro, Albania, Serbia, including what is now the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, Romania, Bulgaria and the European part of the Ottoman Empire. When the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, was assassinated by Bosnian Gravillo Princip in Sarajevo on the 28th of June 1914, the Austro-Hungarian government decided to use the murder as a pretext to fight a war with Serbia, even though there was no evidence that the kingdom had been involved in the assassination. This was to prevent Serbia becoming the leader of the United State of Southern Slavs, Yugoslavia. Austria-Hungary declared war with Serbia on the 28th of July and began bombarding Belgrade, the Serb capital, the following day. The army of Austria-Hungary was larger and far better equipped than that of Serbia. However, Serbian Field Marshal Radomir Putnik defeated three Austro-Hungarian invasions left by jo General Oskar Potiorek in August, September and November, December 1914. In 1915, following the failure to gain a negotiated peace with Russia, General Erich von Falkenheim, the German Chief of the General Staff, decided to plan a combined invasion of Serbia involving Bulgaria, Austria-Hungary Hungary, and Germany. This aimed to open a direct supply route between Germany and the Ottoman Empire. Falkenhayn also believed that the continued closure of the Dardanelles would force Russia to surrender. The invasion began from the north and the east on the 6th of October 1915. Montenegro came to Serbia's support, but within three days Belgrade had been captured. Each side suffered over 300,000 casualties. In November, the Serbian army was forced to retreat across the mountains into Albania. Here the survivors were evacuated from the Greek island of Corfu by Allied navies and transferred to Salonika. Serbia would remain under occupation until the last days of the war, with an estimated 650,000 Serbian civilians dying by disease and starvation or killed by occupying troops. Now I will explain the Salonika campaign. The port city of Salonika in northern Greece was vital for supporting Allied operations in the Balkans. Following the combined Austro-Hungarian, Bulgarian and German invasion of, of Serbia in October 1915, the British and the French hurriedly transferred five infantry divisions from Gallipoli to Salonika. These troops moved north to ease the pressure on the Serbian army, but the Bulgarian army soon pushed them back to Salonika. The Salonika front remained largely static from the end of 1915 to September 1918. Nonetheless, the garrison at Salonika, commanded by uh, General Maurice Sorail of France, grew to 300,000 troops by May 1916, with the arrival of Serbian troops from Corfu, French colonial troops and Russian and Italian contingents. The Allied force had a peculiar status in Salonika as Greece, under the pro-German king Constantine I, was neutral until the British and the French forced his abdication in favour of his son in June of 1917, who then brought Greece into the war. General Louis Franchet Despere took command of the Salonika army in June 1918 and began planning for a major offensive similar to the Allied advances on the Western Front. By now, the Allied force had expanded with Greek divisions and included men of Slav background recruited for the Serbian army. This included Austro-Hungarian prisoners of war captured by the Russians and migrants living in Canada, the United States and Australia. Supported by a bombardment by 566 artillery pieces, the Battle of Dobropol began on the 15th of September 1918 and broke through the Bulgarian lines. The Allies began to advance and their Bulgarian army began to mutiny. On the 30th of September, the Bulgarian government signed an armistice, becoming the first of the Central Powers to leave the war. Sickness and disease was a significant factor in the high number of casualties. The British alone suffered from 162,517 cases of malaria and a total of 505,024 non-combat casualties.